next up we got what a 15 year old mass killer looks like part two part two nah y'all been requesting this part two hey I told y'all i got y'all you know what i'm saying uh this video an hour 57 minutes long i'm 30 minutes in we finishing the video today all right now i'm gonna pause the video you know what I'm saying? Uh, if I need to take a break, I'm going to just pause it, come back. You feel me? I'm not about to, uh, you know what I'm saying, just like, you know what I'm trying to say, bro. But, hey, I kind of forgot. Was, oh, I, oh, I don't remember. I think they was, um, they, I think this dude right here, Nick, had killed his parents or something like that. They trying to figure out. I forgot, bro, but we about to see right now, all right? So, hey, let's see what it be. Uh, but as most people would lack an appetite after seeing what he witnessed hours before given the situation this could indicate that he's emotionally disconnected nick is likely feeling more comfortable now the detective has been friendly and joking with him there's been no suggestion or hint that he may be a suspect he may even feel that he can let his guard down as it's becoming more clear that nick is likely the prime suspect taylor shed some light on nick's home life from the outside it appears Nick has everything going for him. However, we learn things might not be as great as they seem, and Nick has been getting into trouble. Did he say anything to you about anything? Has he had any issues with his parents lately? Not that I know. I mean, I think he got in trouble like a couple once or twice because of drinking. This 15-year-old drinking, bro? Damn. This is the first suggestion that there may have been some issues between Nick and his parents. Still, it's pretty common for teenagers to clash with them. Is that what happened? Did he get drunk and then killed his parents because he was mad and he just young, so he doesn't like aware of his actions? Their parents. However, this could be seen as a red flag as teen drinking could be a sign of behavioral problems and issues in the household. At 15 years old, Nick is still in his early adolescent years, so drinking at this age could definitely be more of an indication of behavioral or mental health issues. In other words, it could be considered more concerning when a younger teen starts drinking as it could also be an indication of conduct disorder, which is often a precursor to antisocial personality disorder. Conduct disorder is a behavioral and emotional disorder that can occur in children and teens and usually includes a pattern of lying, rule-breaking, aggression, and destructive behavior. <clears throat> Did you see a gun with Nick at all last night? Did you have a gun? No. Are you sure? Not that I saw. I did not see Did you say or talk about a gun last night? No. Are you 100% positive? Yes. Okay. Do not talk about a gun. Um, have you touched a gun in the last 24 hours? Mm, I touched an airsoft gun. No, no. A real gun? No. All right. Um, has Nick ever said anything about his parents um, abusing and mistreating them or anything like that? Nope. Taylor appears confident in his response when asked if Nick ever mentioned being abused by his parents. Uh, I'm right now. Get food. So got some time. The detective comes back and acts very friendly, asking questions unrelated to the crime to rebuild rapport with Nick. He wants him to get comfortable talking with them because once a suspect begins talking, it's much easier for them to continue. It will also help him to let his guard down. I like it there. Good high school. Good student or? Yeah, good student. Like, what kind of good student? How's your golf team? Good, good. We won counties and then lost regions, but yeah, good team. You can see Nick smiling. His demeanor is extremely troubling and unusual for someone in his position. Nick is frequently touching his face, which can be a self-soothing behavior. Even though he appears to be chatting normally with the detective, it's apparent that he's not truly comfortable with the interview process. Talk about your dad. What do you do for them? Lawyer. The detective asks him about his father in a very casual manner to see how he responds and to gauge his feelings towards him. He's trying to see if Nick's response aligns with what his friends will say. What firm? What firm? What was it? Christian, Mother, and Reed. What do they do? What kind of law? Um, he's a business lawyer. Did oh, you, mom. Um, she had a property management sort of side business, more of a stay at home. Oh, that's cool. Cool. You get along with them okay? Yeah, yeah great. Dad, uh, just try to get no. <laughs> it seems like he wants to avoid discussing any issues he had with his father to remove a motive for him being the killer. Um, got any enemies or anything? Enemies or problems or Fairly problems at work? No, I don't think so. 
The officer isn't asking these questions because he actually thinks enemies or problems at work caused the murders. Rather, the officer is once again trying to get Nick to let his guard down by making him believe that he isn't a suspect. Um, you ever talk about anything that's uh, going on at work that... I mean, you know, not in a bad sense when we talk about work, you know, but right. nothing... Did he have to travel at all, or is he... Pretty much here. I mean, oh, did? last time he traveled was actually probably with me down in South Carolina, which was a family matter. He's just not really traveling business much. Okay. Oh, so he wasn't having to go to other businesses no, around the South Carolina. Okay. Okay. Pretty much all local. But I ain't gonna lie, though, for him being 15 years old, he pretty... I ain't gonna lie, he pretty smart. Like, just hearing him talk, so like that, like, he ain't like, he like he know what he doing, kind of. I don't know, maybe it's just me. But I remember, like, if I was 15, like, I'm kind of, it was, I have more energy, i say. Like, I don't know. I don't know. He, like, super calm and just, like, everything just okay. You know what I'm saying? Like. Okay. Her mom was there all the time. <clears throat> how about your brothers? Um, went to, they both went to Cockstone Middle School. How old, how old are they? Eighth and sixth grade, so Eighth, thirteen, seven. eleven. Okay. Is there anything else? He's not going to put you in anything, is he? Is he going to say that you've had any involvement in anything? No, I didn't. Is he not going to say he told you? He did not tell me. The detective knows Alex already lied to him once, so he needs to apply a little more pressure, like he did with Taylor. It's noteworthy that the detective basically takes an identical approach with all the boys. I am, are you 100% sure? I'm 100%. I don't want this to come back and bite you. I'm 100% sure. Do you know anything else you should be telling me right now? No. I'm going to let you think about it for a while. I can tell he the dumbass friend at a, at a group. He's the friend that will tell everything. Him and the other nigga that's already telling. The little nigga that's, that's touching his head and shit. He turned the other way. Turned towards the door. Them two is the dumbasses. He like the dumbass daredevil. And the other one is like chubbier. He like just the dumbass, dumbass. You know what I'm saying? He like he did like already. He lied. He, he, he just, I can already see it, bro. Make sure, because this could come back on you hard. Yes. The detective leaves Alex alone to let him digest the entire situation and to consider the seeds the detective planted about how serious this situation is. Alex appears to have taken what the detective said very seriously because he immediately offers up some important information when the detective returns after about 10 minutes wow. alone. But I do remember one thing to tell you. Nick told his little... Dang. You see how smart the... I keep telling y'all. You see how smart the detectives is, bro. You see it, bro. You, he left the room. He, he came in the room and talked about how important it was. Then left. <clears throat> and then he left so he can think about... What he just said, should he say, should he tell him more information, and blah, 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 blah. And now look. Damn, bro. He dumbass. Look, he want me to stay, stick to your story. You, if you don't lie, bro, you got to lie all the way. You can't, you can't, you know what I'm saying? You can't fuck around. You can't do that, bro, because the cops is winning. But he, they only kids, though. You can't even say. They all stupid as hell, first of all. For even being here, so let's not even, yeah, bro. My bad. After about 10 minutes alone. But I do remember one thing to tell you. Nick told his little brother to keep the door unlocked for him to come in last night. He may be worried about whether he could get into trouble, especially if he gets caught in another lie. It appears that he's now being honest and cooperative. I remember Nick told his little brothers how he was going to get in to keep the bathroom door unlocked. That's how he was going to get in the Did keys. he call his little brother? Or? Yeah, he called him. Yes. And that's how he's going to get in the house? Yes. The basement door? Yeah, the slider. No. The, like where the pool table is that kind yeah, of thing? Yeah, yeah. That. Okay. Right, that's real important. I should remember that. That's cool. Thank you. The detective returns to confront Taylor with one of his lies to further impart on him the fact that he needs to be totally truthful. Do you remember at one point Nick calling his uh, little brother? Yeah, he called his brother. What did he tell him? What did he ask him? Oh, they didn't pick up. How about before that? They get a hold of his brother and say, leave the back door open? Yes. Okay. He did. All right, that's the stuff, man. You can't, you can't keep doing that to me. You gotta be 100% true with me. All right? Yes. Okay. I don't that's think I'm going after. Okay. At any point. I want you to think about it. This is a murder. Four people have been murdered. Yes. Two little boys, a mom and dad. Yes. There's nothing more serious than this right now. I ah, doing his tactic again. I'll be back talking a little bit. Don't want you to lie to me. You don't want that to happen to you. 
I thought I thought you were talking about Africa. Okay, I understand. Sorry. I'm sorry. Taylor's claim that he misunderstood the questions may have been true, but either way, he appears to be even more nervous now. Again, the detective leaves him alone. When you got home with Mr. Smith, right? You went upstairs and you guys went outside apparently? Right, went outside. Where did you go? Went out to the back and then that door was unlocked. It was unlocked? It was unlocked to the basement side door. Is that characteristically locked also or do they always? Mm -hmm. 75, that's, that's not, because that's sort of more the kids, you know, basements. So that's probably, okay. more or less it's not locked as often. Okay. Okay. Man, if you had to make a guess how someone got in the house, how would you? Right, that basement. That basement. When did you see your parents last or talk to your parents? When did you see your parents last, I should ask? When they dropped me off at Brian Jango's house. So, you saw that Greg was in the parents, in the car with the parents Brian when he dropped you off? was in the car and then stayed at the house. Okay. He got dropped over at Ryan's house. <laughs> It's shocking how casually Nick is talking about his parents and brothers, given that he just found them dead. Okay. D did you talk to my phone at all that night? The plan was they were going to pick me up at, I think, 9 o'clock the next morning. Okay. What was that? You guys had something to do? Or? Just uh, clean the house, actually. Clean the house. Okay. Did you talk to your brothers at all? No. Or not? Okay. Um, what time did you start calling the house? Um, this the first call, I think we called just because the kids were to come over tonight and we were sitting a little, little get together. And right. We called it about 10 o'clock in the morning. Oh, uh, this morning? This morning. At okay. Family's house phone. And I called their cell where I called all the numbers Craig's cell, my mom's cell, dad's cell, work, even our Deep Creek house. Oh, uh -huh. okay. It doesn't really make sense that he was apparently so worried about his family that he called multiple phone numbers to try to get a hold of them, even the home phone of one of their other houses but he didn't just go down the road to see if they were at home. His friend's house was close to his own home, so he could have easily walked there to check on his family much earlier in the day. Did they try to call you at all last night? Nothing, nothing, nothing that you missed or messaged or, yeah, is there a text on yours? Any yes, text, yes. any text from them or whatever? Okay, okay. So what time do you think you left Ryan's house to go back to the house to get the car? You had to guess. 1.30, I, just, 130. I know because it's the clock, 1.30. Okay. How long take you to go over there? Um, not exactly sure. I got lost getting there. I probably guess around three. Nick claims he left Ryan's house at 1.30, which is about an hour later than what the other boys told the detective. He also states that he didn't get to his house until 3 a.m. He may be intentionally giving an erroneous timeline, so it doesn't line up with him being at the house when his family was killed. Um, I noticed that there's the, we're being told there's a gun locker in the house? In the basement. basement. What kind of guns your dad have? Two pistol, a 40 caliber, nine millimeter. Bro know it exact guns. Now, I can't just say, oh, he know the gun, so he automatically knew how to kill him and blah, 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 blah. But you can say that um, he knew the guns, bro. So it could be a chance that he did just um, kill him. But also, you got to think, like, his dad might have told him or blah, 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 bro. Like, a little, do you know what kind they were? I mean, do you know guns at all? Yeah, you know, little Smith and Webb, two both are special weapon. One was a gift from our uncle, who is the pistol they use on the Boeing 747 things. Okay. So one of those, and then 30 out 6 rifle, a couple of... Nah, bro, this nigga, yeah, he know too, he know a little bit too much, bro. Like, the dude sound like he teaching a class about guns. Bro, just said, what, a 3006? What the hell? A little, do you know what kind they were? I mean, do you know guns at all? Yeah, little Smith and Wesson. The, the most, like, I know, like, the, like, okay, Smith and Wesson, you know what I'm saying, a Glock. Okay, it's a couple of shotguns, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I just group all together, like, yeah, it's like three pistols, uh, two shotguns, a sniper, you know what I'm saying? I w this dude knows the names, how many bullets go into it, how to, uh, how to, uh, what to do with the gun jam, you know what I'm saying? Where to buy it from. The pistol weapon, yeah, one was a like gift from our uncle, who is the pistol they use on the Boeing 747 things. Okay. So one of those, and then 30 out 6 rifle, a couple shotguns. Um, you guys find it all, or just? He hunts, I find it a couple times. More clay pigeons, we shoot those up at Creek. Okay. So pistol wise, nine millimeter, forty caliber, 
Is it some thirty-eight special? Is it a revolver? I mean, it's different. Is it? It's a revolver. It's a probably like a two-inch barrel, and then there's this World War II old old pistol. Okay. With this question and his answer, the police officer is establishing that at the very least he had enough knowledge of the gun locker that he could potentially use the guns inside it. This adds to the likelihood of him being the shooter. I'm not sure what that takes. I was told there's two lockers, is that true? There, yes, there's the rifle case and then there's the ammo slash uh, pistol case thing. Okay. So it's two different cabinets, I take it? Yes. Or? Okay. Okay. And I asked before, do we know where the keys are to the... I don't know. But you don't have an extra set that you can get to us to... Um, if I if I had to get maybe his dressers next to his um, bed, might have okay. it. I don't know. But you, you don't have anything. Not enough that I know. Of. Okay. In his room alone, Taylor is showing signs of both stress and impatience by pacing and tapping his fingers on the table. Anything else we need to talk about? Yeah, I think I'm. This nigga Taylor in there is about to die, bro. This nigga is about to die. <laughs> that nigga stressing out so damn bad. Bro, put his coat on. Bro, walking up by. Bro, I remember we watched the JCS and that one girl, Jody, was doing fucking handstands on the wall, bro. Oh my god, that just reminded me of that, bro. If y'all haven't seen that uh, JCS video, bro, I think it's called like uh, something Jody, bro. Just go watch it. You'll see it, bro. But Jesus Christ, this nigga just going crazy. <laughs> ah, that nigga put his coat on. Why'd you put your coat on, bro? You like you hot. It's not hot in there. Taylor is showing signs of both stress and impatience by pacing and tapping his fingers on the table. Anything else we need to talk about? Yeah, I think I remember like the times when I got you. You were talking about like abusing, like, he told me that his dad just sometimes trying to say something. Like, I don't know, when he got caught. Yeah. It, it definitely worked, bro. I'm not gonna lie. Like, the thing definitely worked because it is two of them now. You know what I'm saying? The both dumbasses I was talking about. The other dumbass, the dumbass airhead, and this nigga just a dumbass all around. Um, now he about to go and talk about everything. The, it worked, bro. It worked. The interrogation tactics, bro. I think I remember like the times when I got you. You were talking about like abusing, like. He told me that his dad just times trying to say something. I don't know when he got caught or anything or whatever. Mm -hmm. And his dad was like, said something like a failure or something. Did say degrading to him and stuff? Yeah. How did, how did Nick do in school? I think he does pretty well. He mm -hmm. takes some like AP classes. Mostly GT, I think. Okay. Nick was likely smart and a good student if he had AP classes. Drinking is a behavior that doesn't typically align with the profile of a good student. But oftentimes, high-achieving students can put excess pressure on themselves to perform and thus seek out ways to cope with the emotional stress that results from that excess pressure. Sometimes, these types of students have parents who set excessively high expectations for their academic achievement. Has he talked about anything about with his parents? No, he didn't say anything. Did he talk about having issues with his dad or anything? No, he said his dad's like really like hard on him though. Alex also hints at a troubled relationship between Nick and his dad. However, this may be true in a number of families with teenagers. What kind of guy is Nick? He's a nice guy. Mm -hmm. Is he obsessed with guns or anything? Does he like guns? Yeah, he has a lot of airsoft guns. What do we say, bro? We knew it, bro. We knew it. You're obsessed with guns, bro. You see how he was explaining the shit? Bro, bro is a suspect, bro. But we already knew this anyways. How about real guns? Do you know if you ever go shooting with his dad or anything? No. I don't think he's a... I don't know. That sounds like a real... That sounds like a real genuine answer, too. Have, did he talk about a gun last night at all? No. A real gun? No, you know. Have you ever seen him carrying a real gun? No. You said you had a good relationship with your dad. Was he hard on you at all or anything like that? Like, but not, I mean, you know, we've had our issues, but... Okay. You know. Your friends ratted, ratted you out said you got caught drinking? Yeah, yeah. By saying that his friends ratted him out, the detective may be trying to do two things here. First, show Nick that it's okay to admit mistakes he's made in the past, in the hopes that he may admit to other mistakes he's made in the past. And second, implicitly indicate to him that his friends have information about his past mistakes that they are willing to share with the police. <laughs> what happened there? Um... There was actually twice. One time I got caught at a friend's house, and then 
there was a ski trip. This was actually about a month ago. Yeah. Ski trip up to Vermont, and I stupidly brought some stuff, and you know, they found it, and you know. Your parents were on a ski trip with you? No, they uh, found it in my bag before we left. Ooh, okay. So. He reveals that he had been in trouble recently, but acts as though the relationship with his parents is pretty good. Still, this indicates that Nick seems to have a pattern of disobeying the rules. It's possible that he may have had addictive tendencies if he's bringing alcohol to take with him on a trip. But of course, to an extent, teen drinking can be considered somewhat typical of the age since adolescents do experiment with alcohol, often well before they're of legal drinking age. Brian or someone told me that. You called home and talked to Greg at one point last night? Called him around. I think I called him to walk around Spring Lake or Spring Down. Did you talk to your brothers at all? No. Or not? Okay. Nine, ten. Okay. What did you tell him? Told him, don't leave the back door unlocked. Why'd you tell him to do that? I was going to go into the house and grab the keys. Okay. I'm not trying to pin on you for driving a car. I don't, I, it's just. Oops. At this point, the officer has yet to become accusatory towards Nick and continues attempting to convince him that he isn't a suspect. Leaving the back door open could possibly prove premeditation. The detective should have gotten more clarity as to why he made this request of his brother. Still can't think of anybody who want to do this to your parents. How about away from work? Any issues? Neighbors? Or... Um, there's a... There's, uh... Bobby, something in the front of it, and not, this is just a really shot in the dark, there's been some, he's had some cops from the house before, he's sort of the neighborhood goof. Yeah, I guess you call him, I mean, that's... What kind of, why, why are the police coming to the house? I really don't know myself, I mean, I've heard drugs, but, you know, the rumor mill starts, who knows? On Powers Avenue? Powers Avenue, it's sort of the most decrepit looking house. Nick may be trying to point the detectives in another direction by mentioning the neighbor who has apparently been in trouble with the police before. He may be feeling somewhat concerned since the detective was questioning him more closely, so he wanted to put suspicion on someone else instead. Additionally, naming someone else could indicate that Nick truly doesn't believe he's a suspect at this point. All right, we're coming down the end here. Okay. The detective returns and asks a broad, open-ended question to see what Alex may have remembered while sitting alone for an hour. Anything else you think you need to tell me? Oh no. He always says his like brothers are annoying and stuff, and he says his mom drinks a lot. Does she? It can be a red flag when there's a parent in the home that might be abusing alcohol. There's an impact on the whole family system when there's a parent who abuses alcohol, including the other parent, Nick's father, who may feel he has to compensate for the mother's absence. If this is true, and it's not been confirmed to be, this could create stress on the family as a whole. Okay, how about the father? I don't know, he just says he's really hard on him. Okay. And just, I guess he calls him Hitler, I don't he Calls him Hitler? Yes. Because he's really hard on him. Okay. Nah, bro, that's, I ain't gonna lie, bro, nah. You don't just call somebody Hitler just talking about their heart. Like, bro, hell no. Nah. You call somebody Hitler, bro, that's me. Like, they at the top of the totem pole, bro. You know who Hitler is, right? Hitler, bro? You called your dad Hitler, bro? Yeah, you... Like, come on, bro. He either had to be, like, really mad that day, or I don't know. But... And you're sure he didn't let on what was going on last night? No, he said nothing. I just want to do that. Okay. All right. So my thing is, bro, I don't... Like, I wonder who he killed first. Like, I, I feel like he killed his dad first. But I just feel like, bro, it's so fucked up, bro. Because, like, the kids, bro, them, your two little brothers, bro, you killed your little... Like, how could you sit there and kill your little brothers, bro? Like, really, though. And then, you gotta really think about it, too, bro. The dude probably was drunk, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? You gotta tell me before we go here. Because this is it. I don't, we're gonna start talking to Nick now. Like I told you before, I don't want him to come back and say, I told them this or I told them that. or Because that, that puts things in different. Up to now, you've been perfectly honest with me. I just don't want something coming back on you guys when you've been trying to think. It's about... It's all I remember. Okay. All right, then. We're going to get you out of here, then. Oh, yeah. Get your ride, you, Taylor, and your dad, and uh, Ryan, too. Okay. Get you going.
Alex, Ryan, and Taylor are all allowed to leave the police station and go home, while Nick remains alone to continue answering questions. Get ready, because this is where the case really goes off the rails. Alright, let me check see if there's some food here for you. Where are my friends, by the way? Do they go home? Or home parents come. We have to have parents come get them. Okay, so you're it? Yep. All right, let me check. From Nick's perspective, he likely doesn't think that the police would provide a meal to a murder suspect, and this puts him further at ease. However, this is actually a common tactic when interrogating someone. People are more likely to open up when they're at ease, and people are more at ease when they're fed. <laughs> The detective leaves him alone to eat the food he requested. After everything that's happened to his parents and brothers, Nick is able to eat a burger and fries. After he's done eating, Nick moves to a different chair and lays down with his feet up. This shows he feels at ease and relaxed, which is abnormal. It also shows a disrespect for a... Yeah, bro, I'm about to, like, bro, and that bitch comfortable as hell. I need this nigga switching chairs, taking his shoes off. Damn, bro, might as well just get a pillow, lay down on the floor at this point. <laughs> bro, and this bitch comfortable as hell, dog. And don't care at all either. Authority. Most 15-year-olds would be afraid to put their feet up and lounge back like that in a police station. He's acting. Stanky ass socks. That boy in the games. Watched them bitches since 1984. Like this is his living room. This could be an indication that he completely does not care about the serious events unfolding all around him. This could also be an indication of a sense of entitlement. Again, this shows a complete lack of concern for what has happened to his family right, hours bro. ago. Nick has been left alone in the room for over 25 minutes. Hey, Nick. This is my partner. The officer re-enters the room and introduces his partner, another police officer. I've been a cop a long time. I've been homicide. I've been here a while. Stuff's just not adding up for me right now. With you, okay? Mm -hmm. See, now, when they bring in they, when they bring in they mans, bro, this is when it gets crazy, bro, because their mans is either going to start interrogating them, like, real hard. The mans do a lot, bro, because now he's going to feel, like, you see how he's doing a tactic now. He's staring him into his soul. He's soul, he's soul searching right now. So, right now... This is when he's trying to get serious. Like, he's really trying to get to the bottom of this case. He know he been bullshitting him. He probably said a little couple truths. But he know he been bullshitting him. You know what I'm saying? So, definitely, like he said, it's gonna, this, gonna, this, we have to see, really, like, what happens. This is the first time that the officers become accusatory towards Nick. And his intricately woven story is just about to fall to pieces. Tell me why your dad was so pissed at you yesterday. Wasn't bad. All your friends are saying that your father was uncharacteristically just, just livid with you yesterday. The detective may be lying to him about his friends saying his dad was mad at him yesterday, as that was not mentioned in any of the three interrogations. The detective likely wants Nick to believe that his friends turned on him so that he will feel he has no choice but to admit the truth. I mean, I see what he's going to the parents around me. But anyway, I'm uh, what now? Yes, he, when he dropped me off Fingal's house. Mm -hmm. I went to the door and made sure the parents were out. Okay. But everybody's saying that he was just, he was ticked off. What was he mad about? He wasn't mad. Is there a reason they would say that? What? Is there a reason that they would say something like that? Um, he's not, he's not over nice though, I don't think. That's uh, not, <clears throat> they said it was uncharacteristic for him that usually when he does see them, he's always pleasant. That's why this particular moment stood out to them. Well, I mean, they didn't see him. Other, there was one person, Fingles, Brian okay. Fingles saw him, so I'm okay. not sure. With their base and their experience. I'm, I'm just no, not like what they're I'm, saying. They just didn't say Mr. Ferrari. Okay. So you're saying he wasn't upset? No. And even if he was, they wouldn't have seen him. So okay. It all would have come through me, what they. Hmm. So. All right. But if things aren't, aren't adding up here, I, I, I don't understand some things that happened here tonight. Um, I think you had something to do with what happened tonight. If he were innocent, you might expect him to immediately and strongly deny killing his family, but he's silent. His mind is likely racing, as he may have thought he got away with it since the detective was so personable and the interview was very non-threatening in the beginning. 
I think that you killed your family. And the thing is, bro didn't say nothing the whole time. He literally didn't even say nothing. Oh, bro. The more you lie, the deeper it gets. The implication is that if he were to come clean, he could receive lesser punishment, and that if he lies, his punishment will be worse. Nick has already waived his right to remain silent and hasn't since invoked that right. There's got to be a reason why you did this. The officers say, we need to know why, but legally speaking, they actually don't. Although a motive may help a grieving family receive closure, proving a motive isn't actually legally required to prove murder. You just have to prove that the suspect killed a person and had the intent to kill that person. While it's true that judges can't use a criminal's honesty in determining inappropriate punishment, punishment for first-degree murder can only be so lenient. So the officer's statement isn't entirely accurate. Even then, it's actually not illegal for a police officer to lie about the effects of confessing, so long as the suspect has waived his rights. This, your family, we need to know what happened here. Look at this. There are happier times. The other detective holds up what is assumed to be a family picture, likely trying to appeal to Nick's emotions. Nobody broke into that. That nigga don't give a fuck. He killed his he killed his family. He don't care about no damn pic. He literally, bro, think about what just happened. He just told him, I think he was the one person that killed him. He didn't say nothing. Didn't try to deny it. Bro, damn near accepted his fate. Then the dude puts out a pic. Where did you even get that picture from? That's a perfectly um, portfolio picture, bro. A framed picture. Did you steal it out their house? Did the police steal their picture out their house, bro? That's hilarious. But anyways, he don't give a fuck. He don't care. I'm telling you, that's the last thing on his mind. He, if, if anything, it's probably going to make him mad because he can just remember it all how everybody made him feel or his dad was hitler or his mom was drinking all the time his his little brother was so irritating you know what i'm saying if that if anything that's what's gonna make him matter bro he don't care bro the house last night Joe. yeah it had to be you nobody else did this you know where we found the keys for the gun locker where you, you tell me you know where they are we searched the house yeah you do they're under your mattress in your room the police may not even have this evidence at all. It's a common tactic for police officers to tell a suspect that they have some sort of smoking gun evidence, even when they don't, to get the suspect to believe that confessing is their only way out of this situation. Damn, that shit crazy. The police damn near just a mind game, bro. This is a fucking big ass mind game. See, if you somebody who studied this shit, you could low key go on that bitch and really like outsmart the police. But it's going to be hard, though, because this is their job, and you're just a nigga. So, I don't know. But I would say get a lawyer, bro. I wouldn't even tell them nothing. Get a lawyer. On the right side of the bed. Nobody you put them there. Nobody broke into this house. You went into that house. You called and had your brother leave the door open. The officers recall that Nick called Greg and had him leave the door open. Because the first officer allowed him to tell his own version of events earlier, he now has something to convince him that lying is of no use. There's no other explanation. Yes, you did. And the more you lie, the deeper it's going to get for you. You're 15 years old. You really do still have a life ahead of you. But the more you lie, the deeper it gets for you. I mean, do you want people to look at you as a cold-blooded killer? Or somebody that just made a mistake? The second officer utilizes a classic technique of the Reed method of interrogation, asking Nick if he is a cold-blooded killer. With this technique, an officer suggests two alternative reasons why the suspect committed the crime, with one of the responses being somewhat more socially acceptable. Even if he admits to the more socially acceptable option, he would nonetheless be confessing. Nobody else did it. They love saying that. Um, what, what did they love saying? Oh, uh, wait, I forgot. Cold buddy killer or oh someone who made a mistake. They love saying that right there, bro. That's really big. Because if you really think about it, bro, if you say, Oh, I made a mistake, like people are literally gonna be like, they're gonna be like, Yeah, bro, I did make like they try to like um say like they try to make it seem like it's okay. You know what I'm saying? It's okay to confess because you made a mistake. But that's what they want you to say. You made a mistake. You didn't make a mistake. You might have actually made a mistake, actually, but it don't matter because you're going to jail for the rest of your life. So, whether it's a mistake or not, 
Yo, dumbass did it. No one told you to do it. No one put a gun in your head, sick, go kill your family. No one said that. You did it on your own. Your free will. All right. So, <laughs> they love, they love, they love saying that. And it's a really good tactic, too, bro. I ain't gonna lie. Really smart as hell. Tell me how the keys got on your mattress. Nobody broke into your house. They the killed your family. The only gun missing is a 9mm. Why? Was it your father? I didn't kill him. You did. You killed your family. His denials are in a soft whisper. For the first time, he looks like the child that he really is. Throughout the interrogation, Nick is presented as a young man with a level of maturity that is way beyond his years. But here, he looks like a scared child. Why did you call your father Adolf Hitler? That's our, he's, he's straight. I mean, that's our whole, that's just a joke. My mom was called him Hitler Force. Y'all joke about calling your dad Hitler? Y'all joke about that? That's a, that's funny? Is that supposed to be funny, bro? No, that's not fucking funny. That is, that's weird and OD. Calling somebody Hitler, bro. Hitler's like literally like the most hated person in history. The most hated person, bro. You mean telling me you're going to call your dad Hitler? Jokingly. You hate, y'all have a, 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 a level of hate for him, bro. That's the only way. How else could this happen other than you? It was. And saying no, it wasn't, isn't going to make it go away. Right now, you're a man. You, you've got to mess up to this. If I couldn't. You did do it. As we speak, we're developing more and more evidence that you did this. There's no other explanation for what. There's no other explanation for what we're finding other than that you did it. What evidence is it that I did it? You'll see. You'll see. You only got a couple of evidence. You lied to us. You lied to us about you contacting your brother. You lied to us about the I, keys. I never lied about contacting my brother. I told you that. He only told me after I pointed it out to you that you did it. I didn't. And the keys. The keys to the gun locker are in your bed or under your bed. There's no other explanation. Nobody broke into this house. It was you. You left your friends. What happened? Why? Explain to us why this would have happened. There's no reason for me to kill Adolf. They provide me everything I want. But they were strict. The detectives mention a possible motive that Nick's parents were strict, which he brought up himself throughout the interrogation. The detective is using this information to see if he will downplay the issues he has with his father to avoid appearing like he has a motive. Nick is more mature for his age, so it's likely that being controlled by his parents was a significant source of stress for him. Plus, if he does have antisocial personality disorder, then there's even more reason for him to have an intense resentment towards his parents for being strict and controlling him. People with APD are extremely self-centered and self-serving. They typically like to manipulate and control other people. They certainly don't respond kindly to anyone who tries to control them. So much so that people with APD don't even respect people in authority positions, like police officers or judges. They see themselves as superior to everyone because of their grandiosity and inflated self-image. So they were strict. So I, don't know, I would say that's low-key me, but I, I respect authority. Um... I wouldn't say I don't respect authority. I would just say, like, I don't like being controlled. You know what I'm saying? Like, I it's okay to uh, if you give me a suggestion on what to do with my life or something like that. But at the end of the day, it's still my life. And what I'm going to do is what I'm going to do. And who going to, like, the, the biggest thing I say is I'm going to grow. I grew up alone. And I'm going to die alone. It's only me. So you telling me what you want me to do with my life because you think, you, you think. This is what you think. You think that this is the best choice for me. 
You know what I'm saying? I, I don't really care. Like, it's a suggestion. Okay, I take it into consideration. If I don't like what, what I heard or whatever, I'm not going to do it. It's just as simple as that. I'm going to figure out my way, bro. Because at the end of the day, it's my life. And what I'm going to do with my life is what I'm going to do, bro. You do with your life is what you did. I'm going to do with what I want to do with my life. I'm not going to let somebody control me and say, oh, yeah, do this, do this, do this, do this. Do this. Because at the end of the day, bro, parents will do this. This is, this, this is crazy because my friend has said this. Parents that go like this, they just say, oh, do this, do this, do this, go to college, do this, do blah, 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 right? And then at the end, and then, and then it turn around. Then you say, okay, I went to college, I did everything you want me to do. Now, um, what should I do now? I'm at the end of my totem pole. I did everything you said I was going to do. And everything You said everything going to work out perfectly fine and, and blah, 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 blah. And then all they say is, I don't know. You feel me? Now, now they don't know. At first, they they do every every answer, everything at all. But then when you go do the actual shit they tell you to do, and it's wrong, now they, you know what I'm saying? Now they, so, oh, I'm sorry, man, my bad. I, I, suggestion, bro. It's a suggestion. I'm going to take it consideration. That's it, bro. You know what I'm saying? Now, when it comes to, uh, when it comes to, uh, what was I about to say? Uh, fuck. What was I about to say? Oh, the authority. When it comes to authority, I don't really feel like I'm just, like, I disrespect the authority because I feel superior. I don't feel superior. I just feel like I know what I want to do in my life, and I know uh, a plan. I have a plan for myself. I don't think that, that, just because I have that in my head, meaning, now it means that I'm just superior to everybody else. You know, like, you know what I'm saying? No, bro. You feel me? No, that, I don't know. But the ha first half is true. But the second half isn't. We talk to people every day who love their wives, love their children, love their babies, love their friends, and they sit right where you're sitting. They love them too. <laughs> but things happen. We're human beings. Things upset people. And they, this is one of the ways that they act out. The second officer is once again attempting to use the read technique by saying things happen. We're human beings. The officer is trying to empathize with him and maybe trying to normalize the killings. By making murder sound so normal and that other people do the same thing, it makes it easier for Nick to confess. And it was probably something that just, it happened just like that. It happens that fast. Help us explain it. And somebody Help doesn't. us be able to explain to the family what happened here. Convince me you didn't do it. But if, if I did it, why would I leave the key? You know, if I just, if I was, if I planned, you know, if I killed my family, why would I leave the keys underneath my mattress? Because that's where you put them. Because you're stupid. I never thought we'd find them. And if... You, you didn't know we were going to go, We're turning your house upside down. We're finding things. Cell phones, all kinds of stuff. It's not the end of the world, but if you're going to sit here and lie, it's, it's, right. it's going to be problems. Listen, again. People sit in that chair every day and say the same things that you're saying. And believe me, when they're done, they feel much better. We wouldn't be sitting here talking to you like we are if we didn't think you did it. I know your friends didn't do it. I know nobody broke into that house last night. I didn't need the back doors open. Still, it's breaking in. Nobody did that. Your parents were supposed to come get you at 9 o'clock this morning. You don't bother going home to check on them all day. You knew you were supposed to go home and clean the house. Instead, you go to the mall. You knew you didn't have to. And that's why. Go home. I didn't want, I mean, I didn't want to go home. I wanted to go to the mall. I knew I had to clean the house. So I obviously didn't want to do that. So I thought I called them, left messages, and they couldn't be mad at me. So why didn't you just walk home? So I wanted to go home. I didn't want to clean the house. Doesn't make sense. Why not? Because your parents are strict. Right? And you know what you, you know what you were supposed to do. And you, my parents, but I, I still make mistakes. I mean, That's not a mistake. No, no, not the, the, I mean, they're strict, but they're not, they're not that, for, for example, so uh, three weekends ago, the alcohol that I told, about, told you about, mm -hmm. I wasn't grounded for that. Obviously, I wasn't. I was at a friend's house two weekends later. I mean, they can be strict, but they're not, you know. Then why did it happen? I didn't do it. You did. And we know you did. 
So that tells me you are even more of a dumbass. Because you just said your parents are strict, but they're really not strict. Nigga, why did you kill them then? They're not even strict. Bro, people have it way harder than you. People out here can't even leave a house. People can't even have phones. They can't do anything. And you... It, it, Hey, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I have to say it, bro. It's that white people shit. It's that white people shit, bro. You can hate me, bro. Look, it's that white people shit, bro. You only see white people do this dumb ass shit, bro. It's only white people, bro. You know what I'm saying? It's only white people. I'm sorry. You feel me? I'm not degrading y'all, but at the same time, shit line up, it line up. This same with black people. You know what I'm saying? We got our own shit too. Y'all not the only ones. We have our own shit too. But this is just, in the case, this is some white people shit. And what black people do, that's some black people shit. <laughs> y'all know y'all wouldn't do some shit that we do. We know. I know. You know what I'm saying? But this is the same shit. I wouldn't do some shit like this. It's only white people do some stupid ass, crazy ass shit like this. You know what I'm saying? Especially as a young kid, bro. You're crazy. I'm not. I've been doing this a long time, Tom. What? And the police are still at your house. Everything points to you. Everything. What? What? Points to you. The only... Thing you discovered the keys. I don't know how they got there. I didn't put them there. Listen, if I if I if somebody to... breaks into a house, okay, they're not gonna go in the bedroom and throw keys under the mattress. No, I, I'm not saying that. My the gun, the pistol was out. You put cleaning. you put the keys there. Where was the gun? Where was the gun there? It was in the workshop work room. It was right out to clean the gun. Where's Which the gun now? Was the not on there. Where's the gun now? That's another issue. There's a gun out there. <clears throat> Someone else could get hurt by this gun and it's gonna fall on you. There's gotta be a reason why you did this. There's no reason. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't? Look at that family. At one point there were good times. They're still I love them. They're dead. He mentions a few times that he loves his family. It's possible if Nick does have antisocial personality disorder. Yo! That he made this decision based Why do you say it like that though? Chill. They're dead. He mentions a few <laughs> times that he loves his family. It's possible if Nick does have antisocial personality disorder that he made this decision based purely on his desire to satisfy his own immediate needs. Maybe he wanted freedom and wanted to be an independent adult so badly that he decided he would eliminate what was in his way. If Nick has antisocial personality disorder, then he would not react to this interference from his parents like a normal teen would. A typical teen would argue, rebel, sneak out, maybe defy their parents. But eventually, they would succumb to their parents' demands. However, if he has APD, this means he's impulsive and vindictive. Rather than arguing, rebelling, or defying his parents, he would find a way to retaliate. Your brother didn't do it. A burglar didn't do it. How can you say that? I can tell, buddy, this is what I do for a living. I've been doing it for 22 years. You know how many burglaries I've been to? You know how many homicides I've been to? I sit here every day talking to people just like you. I didn't do it. I didn't do it. I didn't do it. And this just goes on and on and on. And you did do it. If you didn't do it, you wouldn't be sitting here. I'm telling you right now. Nobody broke into that house. How can you be so sure? I'm positive. I'm 100% positive that nobody broke into that house. I've been to plenty of burglaries. I know what a burglar looks like. When you walk into a home and the house has been burglarized. This your was house no, wasn't burglarized. This was no burglar? Nobody broke in. Nobody went in there and killed the, your family. You did it. You had a reason to do it. Yeah, you did. What would my reason be? Your father was pissed at you last night. Maybe he didn't like your lifestyle. I don't know. How could I not like my lifestyle? I go to my summer, summer house for two weekends. I get whatever I want, I get it, I mean. People do it every day. Why do people walk into schools and shoot all their friends? Because they're picked on, they don't, you know, they don't enjoy it. I enjoy my life a lot. Okay. It's, it's, uh, Again, I know people that love their children, they kill their children. People. And then another thing, that's, it, it makes it worse too, bro, is because why the fuck, so you mean to tell me that you're, he's giving all this information, bro. He just said his parents wasn't strict. He just said his parents wasn't strict for real. Now he's saying that he get whatever he want. He had the best lifestyle ever. So why did you kill them? Why did you kill them, bro? That's the question. Why did you kill them? 
You have everything you want. What is the reason? I hope they get to the reason, bro. Love their babies, but they kill their babies. People kill out other human beings. This isn't a norm robbery. This wasn't a burglary. By your whole family being dead, you make out the most. I'm sure your father was well insured. Your mom was well insured. Now everything's yours. So you coldly killed your parents? Then there's, there's got to be another reason why you did this other than insurance money. Imagine That's the way you're going to be looked at. The 7 to 15 year old killed, killed, killed his family for money. There's, I didn't kill my family. Yeah, you did. We're going to do this all night, man. It wasn't anybody else but you. Yeah, you did. I'm telling you, you did. Everything about it, the way you act, you're acting as if you're a guilty man. We've interviewed hundreds of people in this room. Hundreds of people. And they all fit your mold. Real quick. That was a good title. What is that mold? The more you lie, the deeper it gets. The fact about the keys. I mean, do you really want me to believe that someone broke into your house, found the keys to the gun locker, which you said you didn't know where they were, opened the gun locker? I, they didn't, I didn't. Let me finish. Sorry. Let me finish. Nick carefully tries to refute the detective's claim that he had the keys to the gun safe under his mattress. He's not challenging the detectives in any way, and he even says I'm sorry when he barely interrupted one of the detectives. Again, his mature demeanor is gone. Or took your dad's gun off his workbench and methodically went through the house and killed everybody in the house, then walked into your bedroom and stuck the keys under your mattress. There's multiple sets of keys. What are they doing under your mattress? Do you want I mean, do you want me to believe that somebody did that? No, I, they, do you really do you believe they that? They didn't put them under a mattress, so that makes no sense. Right? They're there. There's multiple sets of keys. The keys are under your mattress. There's one set of keys. The keys are under your mattress. Do you want me to believe? That someone walked into that house, kills your entire family, and then just puts tap just to put the, the gun, keys under the your mattress. The gun was out. I don't, I didn't need the keys. Okay, I'm telling you. You want me to believe that? But that wouldn't make any sense for me to even touch the keys. Do you want me to believe that? But that's not. But that's not even the keys aren't for this to happen or whatever. It wasn't even necessary. Okay, the but the keys are under your mattress. If your parents didn't want you to have the keys, would they hide them under your mattress? I don't think so. Do you want me to believe that someone broke in, kills your entire family, shoots two small children, and then decides they're going to put the keys under your mattress? It doesn't make sense, does it? Doesn't, it doesn't. Do you want me to believe that someone would break into a house and not take anything? It doesn't make sense, does it? There's a reason that you break into a house, and that's to take valuables. And it's fairly obvious from where your father's found, your mother, and your two brothers, Nobody confronted the burglar and said, get out of my house, and they got shot for that reason. Your family members were executed. And you did it. Yes, you did. No doubt in my mind. There won't be a doubt in the jury's mind either. The only question is why. That's the only question they're going to have. It's up to you to explain. There's a reason for everything. I mean, something triggered this. We've heard a lot of stuff. And that's understandable. And, and people understand that when you make an explanation. And as I told you earlier, people do this every day. Again, they love their babies. They love their children. They love their wives, husbands. <coughs> but sometimes people snap. And it, it happens. Something happened. It wasn't the burglar. Help us understand. Nothing made me snap. I don't know, bud. I'll be back. <clears throat> the detectives return about 10 minutes later. Why are you telling us this big story about going the keys when the keys are in the pocket of your jacket? What? <clears throat> the car keys. Yes. You have them the whole time? Mm -hmm. I don't know, I don't know. 
as my, my friends in Thailand. Again, an untruth. Why did you do this? You keep saying that. It, it, Who did it? How, how, Who what kind of person would do this? Oh, man. <clears throat> what part of what, what we're saying don't you, you, you understand? Is there I, I don't see how one set of keys to... Uh, Why are they under your bed? My parents, well, they don't want me to, you know, to get, this is a burglar. To Come on. Keys. That's cool. Come on. You're going to have to do better than that. So if so, what's what's the the threat here? If you take this trial, I'm going to go to jail based on a set of keys. It's interesting that he says, "So I'm going to go to jail based on a set of keys." This is a smart statement, given that Nick is only 15. It seems that he knows that the detectives need to have more evidence than just the set of keys in order to convict him. No, not just a set of keys. There's a lot more than that. What? I'm not gonna sit here and tell we you. Don't, we don't we don't do that. I think th I didn't do it. There's can be other evidence. You did do it. I didn't do it. Nobody else did this. How can you be so certain? Because I've been a cop for 22 years and my intuition's pretty good. I've been to plenty of homicide scenes. I've been to plenty of burglaries. This wasn't a burglary. You're being, you're being given a chance to explain things. It happened for a reason. There's no reason. You just did it? Yeah, you did. You did. No doubt in my mind. You did this. Who else would do it? I don't know. Drug murderers don't shoot children. They'll break into a house, shoot another drug dealer, but they won't shoot the kid. If Nick committed this crime, he may have felt that if his parents and brothers were dead, there would be nothing standing in his way, and he could do whatever he wanted. He may have chosen to kill his brother so he wouldn't have to share any money belonging to their parents. Another possible motivation for killing his brothers may have been to eliminate any potential witnesses to the murders of their parents. Nick likely believed his plan was very well thought out and smart. He appears to believe that he could fool the police into believing that a stranger broke into the home, killed everyone, but took nothing of value. He displays several narcissistic tendencies, seeming to believe he's very smart and superior, even questioning how the police could be so sure it was him. Only family will do that. Only another person in family would do that. We know that from experience. What reason would I have to kill my brothers? That's what we're trying to find out. If I had some beef with my father, why? Why do the rest of the family? It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't. It's a reason to. It's a reason to. Why did you do it? Explain it to us. The detective grows more confrontational and raises his voice when challenging Nick. People are going to be searching for a reason why this happened. Look at your family. Yes, I love them. And you put a gun to their head and you killed them. There is no other explanation. Nobody broke into that house. You know what be crazy? Now, what if he didn't kill them, though? That's what I'm thinking now. Like, what if he really did even kill these niggas? And they just, they just doing all this just to tell them the truth. How, how do you know? Nobody broke into that how, house. How, how can you be certain? We're 100% certain how? that nobody broke into that house. How? Because we know. But, we know. I'm just, we're sitting here talking. not God. You don't have cameras in my house. I know that nobody broke into that house last night. Nobody. There's an explanation to what happened. There's got to be. Other than this, you were a stone cold killer that killed his family. It's also noteworthy to mention here that people with antisocial personality disorder and other personality disorders often dissociate meaning that they disconnect from thoughts, memories, and feelings. This is often how these individuals are able to carry out horrific acts of violence. They have a way of emotionally detaching when committing the act, as well as afterwards. I get a sense that in the beginning of the interrogation, Nick is almost trying to convince himself that he didn't do it, or he would like to believe he didn't. There's something about the way he denies that seems like he just wants to make it all go away. Everything. 
you're just fine. You're digging yourself deeper into a hole. You're 15 years old. You will spend the rest of your life in jail. Yeah, you did. And if and if I tell you a reason that'll that'll somehow change my jail sentence? No, it gives us it gives us something to tell your neighbors, your family. But I didn't do it. Because everybody's looking for a reason. I didn't do it though. Well the burglar didn't do it. You have done nothing but lie to your friends. I couldn't find the car keys, I couldn't get in the house, all the lights were on. You got the car keys in your jacket. You have no idea where the keys to the gun locker are, yet they're found under your mattress. You leave your friend's house. You don't want to go get the car. You don't come back until 6 o'clock in the morning. It was 30 degrees outside last night. You didn't sleep in your car. You didn't know what to do. That's the problem. That's why you were gone for so long. You spent those hours concocting some silly story that the jury's going to see right through. Not a story. Well, maybe you didn't do that. But you didn't know what to do. I mean, you're claiming that you wake up and all the lights are on. But you know that something's wrong. Why didn't you go in? You knew the back door was open. I never saw the lights were on. The lights in my parents' bedroom. You said earlier that all of the lights were on. You fell asleep, you woke up, all of the lights were still on. I said my parents' bedroom was lights were on. You said all the lights. <sighs> It did. They announced the keys were, um, or my parents were, uh, the lights were on in the house. Uh, the lights were on in the house. <laughs> this is the did, problem. Did you I can't, not, you can't keep not, track of what you're I, saying, man. You can't keep track of what you're I, saying. I can't keep you. track of it. I, I, you asked me where my parents' bedroom was. You haven't shed one tear for your family. You were totally unemotional about this. You walk into a house, your whole family's murdered, and you're just, I didn't do it. Why would I do it? So, so, I was in my so, cry, so crying would make you, <laughs> crying would make you believe that? I think you're, you're trying to convince yourself. You're doing a terrible job of convincing me. <laughs> I have to convince you. Yeah, you do. Believe it or not, you do. You, you, you've heard of me from mind. I couldn't. You did this. There's no doubt in my mind. No doubt in my mind. Afraid it is. Okay. Well, you know what? You're under arrest. Okay. Four counts of first degree murder. Sit down. Mm -hmm. Sit down. Mm -hmm. Okay. The detectives have tried several different tactics to get Nick to confess. First, they suggested that his friends had turned on him and told police his dad had been mad at him. Then they appealed to his emotions by showing him a family photo repeatedly. They pointed out all the lies he's already told. They also tried to see if he cared about his image, prompting him to give a reason for the killing so he wouldn't be labeled as a cold-hearted killer. However, none of this worked. Being arrested and handcuffed will likely scare Nick and make him realize the seriousness of his situation. Leaving him alone right after is strategic, his isolation may increase his stress and put the pressure on him to finally confess. While left alone handcuffed to the wall and table, Nick once again falls asleep. He's alone for around 40 minutes. The sound- No way this nigga is that comfortable. Bro literally don't care, bro. Of the door wakes him up from sleeping. His ability to sleep in this situation is disturbing. The first detective returns to the room alone. Even like, if even if he did, even if he didn't do it, he did do it still. All this shit going on, you fall us. You, you know, you have to, to be able to sleep, you have to be comfortable. Like this dude is literally like, um, he's, I ain't gonna lie, he a mind guy. He posing as the good cop as he removes the handcuffs. Nick may be more likely to be honest with him because he may feel that he's on his side. Nick, I'm just trying to help you out. I'm trying to figure out what happened here. I mean, it was never, this is a horrible tragedy. You know that. Mm -hmm. I <clears throat> we know that all the lights off were in the house. All the lights were off. There are no lights on in the house when you went there. 
The detective immediately confronts him with his lie about the lights being on in the house. He sits very close to him, invading his personal space to make him uncomfortable, and his tone is now a lot more aggressive than before. This is an interrogation technique from the Reed Method, which is called positive confrontation. The detective confronts the suspect with evidence or contradictions from what they said earlier with a definitive tone and aggressively explaining that they know based on evidence that the suspect lied. <laughs> see, see, all these little lies, little, all these untruths. But, 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 maybe I, I talked wrong, but I mean, I know that light was on. Forget what I said, what, you know. Okay, I'm just like, I mean, that light, I know that it was on. What do you want me to, what do you want me to say? Say, I want to know what. I, I want to know what. If, if there's a reason, I still go to I still go to jail. Nick's response that even if there's a reason I still go to jail is very revealing as an innocent person would not make such a statement. If there was any doubt in him being guilty, this statement certainly confirms that he did it. I mean, but there, you understand, there are mitigating factors in the world. There's a cold-blooded killer, and there's a reason why people do things. And there are differences. There's differences in the way things are perceived, the way people hear things. Yeah, inevitably, it could determine the way you live out your life. Yeah. You can live it out as a cold-blooded killer who just killed four members of family, first-degree murder, or maybe there was a reason, however, whatever it might be, there may be a reason. He's still going to jail. Here, the detective uses the Reed technique of mitigating circumstances or alternatives. He begins explaining that people do things for reasons, and sometimes those reasons impact the outcome for the suspect. This is said to try to make it easier for the suspect to confess and feel less judged. It will also make the suspect believe that maybe what they did is justified, or at least somewhat understandable. Even if the suspects lie about why they did what they did, the police still have a confession to the crime on record. But why? You know, if there's an explanation, people want to hear this. People don't want to shut off a 15-year-old kid. They want to know why. Father was beating him or, or, or abusing not maybe not physically abusing him, degrading him. We know he was, he was overly hard on you. We already know that. The detective now uses the alternative step of the Reed technique more in depth. He's presenting two possibilities, one being that he's a cold-blooded killer and the other that there is a reason he did it. He's hoping that Nick will latch on to the less morally reprehensible alternative as it's less threatening for him to confess to. The detective will build up the contrast of the two until he agrees to the less evil alternative, which is an admission of guilt either way. But you did it, and that's just it. The jury's gonna just gonna hear, I didn't do it though, I didn't do it though. You know, I'm not a hard ass. I'm just trying to find out what happened here. And that you give me the option of, oh, well, you know, you can feel better about yourself. Still in jail. Or, from, I mean, I didn't do it. From, so far as what you told me, I really honestly think you have the key. The, the key means nothing. Oh, it means a lot. To, to an experienced um, officer, maybe, but to jury. So you're playing, you're playing it on your mind right now. How am I gonna beat this jury? I've got the jury beat. You, Not in Baltimore County, you, you don't. You've given me the option of going to jail if I'm good at myself, 100%. Or, how long are you gonna go to jail for? What? Nick questions why an explanation would make a difference in jail time. It's unlikely that a truly innocent person would ask this. He's likely trying to feel out if whether it'd be better for him to continue to deny or whether to confess, but to try and give a convincing reason for why he did it. The rest of your life? Or is there a mitigating factor what happened here? There's not. Then why did you do it? I didn't do it. But regardless, there's no mitigating factor. It's clear that Nick is only concerned about himself and feels no moral responsibility in admitting what he did. The detective will need to play into that and make him see a benefit for himself in confessing. This self-serving mentality is very common among criminals. See, that's, that's the horrible thing about this, then. 
All they're left with is you shooting four people. I can't go over it. I can't. I can't go over a piece of evidence. You'll see that in discovery months, maybe a year down the line, after you've been sitting in BCDC for that whole time in the detention center. And if I give a reason, I'd still be sitting in that same detention center. I don't know. Is there a mental issue? Is there something going on here? Sure. So then I commit myself to a mental hospital for the rest of my life. Right? I don't know. I don't know. That's just it. I don't know. I don't know the reason. I can't guess. I, I ain't gonna lie, this nigga low key smart, bro. He he low key outsmarting the cop right now. Not even gonna lie. I can't fathom why this happened. But I'm sure there's a reason. Because I can't imagine in my world that someone would kill their mother, father, and their two little brothers. But maybe there is a reason. It's not up to me to tell the jury the reason. I present the evidence as I have it. And it's in the jury's hand. And you're playing that, and I can see it in your head. You're trying to play it out in the jury. Ah, oh, get this bottom, I get this bottom. I don't know. I wish you could help me. I wish you could saying that I didn't do it. It's saying that, yes, there was one set of keys underneath the bed that I didn't even need the keys to. See, you're, you're, you're harping on one thing. That's just one thing that we're telling you. Nick is arguing with the detective while still being careful and respectful. He's speaking hypothetically here because he's still sticking to his story that he didn't do it. His more mature demeanor has come back now. He's talking more. His tone of voice is a bit louder. Maybe because he feels more comfortable with this detective than the other one. It's interesting how Nick has maintained his composure all along. He's not emotional or angry, but simply trying to present arguments, implying that the keys being under his mattress is not an indication that he killed his family. Given that he's only 15 years old, this type of thinking shows his intelligence and maturity. Try to convince me then. Try to convince me you didn't do it then. What? What? Like you said, there's no reason. I don't understand. There's my, there's every reason to try to convince me. No, no, no I'm sorry, not to convince you. There's, there's no reason for me to kill my family. There's, I mean, there's, they, they don't, be, yes, they're strict on me. So, so what? They don't, they don't ground me when they find me with alcohol. Taking up to a trip, uh, two, week, two weekends later. One, yes, last weekend, I took my friend up to Deep Creek and we skied the entire weekend. This weekend, I was at a friend's house. You know, yes, they're harsh, but they're not that harsh, really. I mean, they let me, they let me do what I want. There's, there's no, you know, there's no reason. This wasn't a burglary. This wasn't someone breaking in the house. How do you know? I know. We know these things. I've been this job for 19 years, yeah. over 19 years now. There's no reason for me. Why would I, why would I jeopardize? You know, you put money into it. I have a very large, or had, have whatever, inheritance coming to me, mm -hmm. regardless if there's insurance money involved or not. I don't know how much insurance money I have. That, you know, that that is coming to me. He has real estate on the side. I am set you know, pretty, you know, I can fill out the real life without that. that not, there's no money reason. They're great to me. I love my family, we do, you know. He doesn't sound convincing at all when he states he loved his family. It appears the father could have been the motivating factor for the killing, and the other three family members may have just been killed because they were home and potential witnesses to the crime. My vacation's planned. I love it. Wouldn't change anything in the world for But nobody broke into the house. Nobody came in. They did. Someone did, obviously. Why do you think that? They're dead. His response is very telling. His entire family was killed, yet he's trying to convince the detective that it was a burglary. A true victim would simply try to assist and be cooperative to help find the killer. Why else do you think that? I came into the house, I saw my mom, her jewelry, whatever thing was tampered with. I mean, I, I've, I've been in the house and the house for all 10 minutes. I couldn't tell you what was missing, what was still there. My Xbox and my Wii were moved around. I mean, I, I just don't even know. Then why didn't the people take that? The person that broke in the house killed your family. Why didn't they take anything? They, got, they killed them and they freaked out. I mean, I, there's, I, they were dead. Why wouldn't you take all this? Apparently they had time to set it all up. 
Well, this is where we're getting at. That's not a burglar. That's a staged event. We all knew that. It's all staged. To make it look that way. When the detective reveals he knows the house was staged as if a burglary occurred, Nick is silent and appears stunned. He looks unsure of what to say next. He did. It was all staged. That's why we know. Every one of us has seen a real burglary. How do you know something was staged? How do you know stuff was missing or not? I don't even know if stuff was missing or not. You said that the Wii and the Xbox were on the table. Mm -hmm. Why weren't they removed? They're big. They're not. They're not easy to carry. Okay. How about the jewelry? There's tons of jewelry in your mom's thing. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Do you? Know, I don't know what she has personally. But you know, she has definitely valuable stuff. I don't know if that's missing. How about the cash on your mom's dresser? So an envelope full of cash. Obvious. I think you. You know, you probably get pretty freaked out when you kill somebody. It's not how it works. It just doesn't work that way. Number one, burglars don't kill their victims. I have a feeling that the, the gun, the 9 millimeters, could be the one that's missing from the house. The only gun missing from the house is going to be that gun. Was it on the workshop bench? There's no gun on the workshop bench. I'm telling you. Something that is missing. Why would your dad leave a gun on the workshop bench? Because he was cleaning it. He's not going to leave a gun on the workshop bench, is he? Do, do you know my father? I think I know him probably better than you do. How can you say, how, you don't know him? He would leave a gun out? Yeah. Were the kids in the house? Kids with that know that we use guns, we know to respect them, and we're not going to touch them. Where's this gun going to be found? I don't know. It's for you guys to find. <laughs> I like that. What? That is. I don't believe you. I'm looking in the eyes of Stone Cold Killer. There's no remorse. The detective now confronts him with his lack of remorse and his behavior, which shows his guilt. The detective is trying to keep Nick's confidence low and to add more evidence to show him that they know he's guilty. Only people that can lay here and sleep are the guilty. You haven't shed a tear. That's why I think there may not have been a reason. Maybe you are just a stone cold killer. I didn't cry. Did you show no emotion? It's only show emotion. That that condemns me. Someone goes a long way. Emotions, people, people play with their emotions. They play them down. You know, it's... Some things are uncontrollable. It's inconceivable that anyone would be able to hold back emotions or act in this situation unless they were a psychopath and unable to feel normal human emotions. The people who have set stories in their head act like this. People that have maybe almost convinced themselves they didn't do this. The detective comes across as extremely confident when he says that guilty people act exactly like Nick is acting. He's trying to make him doubt himself so that he will give in and confess. I know you don't believe it, but we see this every single day. I know the guilty by the way they act. Not even talk about the evidence. I'm just about the way you're acting tonight. The jury won't. <laughs> the jury will. The jury will see this. What, you, you don't, there's no, there's no lesser punishment you're offering. You're saying, we'll come up with a reason, and maybe you're insane and you need to go to a mental hospital the rest of your life. I'm saying that there are explanations out there that can mitigate your life, what's going to happen to you. I don't know what your explanation is. There are reasons why people do things. There are heat of the moment, there are passion. And so what if, what if it was passion? Well, it's still the same outcome. Nick shows his extreme narcissism when he focuses on the fact that he hasn't been offered a lesser sentence if he agrees to come up with a reason, which is why he hasn't done so. It doesn't even occur to him that confessing is the right thing to do out of remorse or guilt. 
It may not be. I can't promise you anything. Right. So withdraw from me. But if, if I if I admit to it, I say I did it, and I say, oh, but you know. But why? It, but I'm looking for. I don't. Okay. I don't want you to say I did. I want to know why. There, there's no why. I didn't do it. But there's, they don't. They don't hit me. They don't do anything. And that makes it worse for us because there's no explanation. You're getting charged with this tonight. There's no, there's no doubts about this. But I'm hoping that there's a reason, a reason that we can explain to the court, to the state's attorney. Here's why he said he did it. The detective goes back to the theme of justification and tells him once again they have enough to convict him already. So he will see a benefit in giving a reason of why he did it. You know there are lesser charges, right? You know there's manslaughter. You're a smart kid. You know there's second degree murder. You know all this, but I don't know why things happen. The only thing I have right now is four dead people. My only recourse right now is first degree murder. If there's a mitigating factor, I would love to know this. Maybe that can affect the outcome in the rest of your life. Repeatedly, Nick has stated, there is no mitigating factor. This statement will ultimately make his defense more difficult if he goes to trial. His defense team will want to put forth a reason for him killing his family, and his statements will make that reason that much harder for a jury to believe. I'm not here to bullshit you. You may think that. That's fine. But you're trying to bullshit me. I just, I, it doesn't seem what you're, the, to pull, to say, say some reason doesn't seem to be very compelling because I'm still going to jail regardless. But if I take it to court, and what if I win? Then that's a heck of a gamble, isn't it? But the rest of your life is a heck of a gamble. But, the rest, but as opposed to what? It's not- To a lesser amount of time? A lesser amount of time, but if it's still 30 Did, years, that's my life. But what if it's not? What if it's a mitigating factor strong but enough? There's no mitigating factor though. See, there is. So you're trying to play it in your head. I know you. I know what you're doing here. You I know, maybe not know you, but I know the type of person because I've seen the person here in the same exact seat before. There's no mitigating factor. But what, what, you want someone to come here and promise you, well, because I was mentally abused, that's why I did this, I'm only going to give you five years. That's what you want, right? That's what you want, but I can't give it to you. Right now, I can't say that, but I can certainly take what you tell me and give it to the right people. This is it. After this, there's no more me. There's no more mouthpiece for you right now. This ends when I leave. Nick is likely feeling very uncomfortable at this point as the interrogation increases in intensity, as evidenced by him frequently rubbing his hand through his hair, which is a self-soothing behavior. I could t you're a good kid. I, 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 I'm, 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 re I'm reaching this. I'm, I'm trying to get there. Um, he's smiling and states he's trying to get there, meaning he's getting ready to confess. It's disturbing that he's smiling while he's considering confessing, and this shows a complete lack of remorse, empathy, or conscience. Nick may have psychopathy or some other serious personality disorder to display such inappropriate emotions. I can tell you care. That's just it. I can tell you care. I can tell you feel what you did. The detective now tells Nick he's a good kid and can tell he cares. This is not what he's actually been conveying at all, but the detective wants to make him feel comfortable confessing to him. You see, this is the first time. The first genuine emotion I've seen all night is coming now. What happened? Nick, what happened? A confession may be coming soon, as Nick has started nodding his head in agreement with the detective. Seeing this, the detective immediately scoots his chair in closer to put more pressure on him. It's part of the read technique to move closer to the suspect when they're about to confess, maintain eye contact, and act like they are an ally or confidant. I can tell you didn't play on this. Is it because you're a father? Yeah, he was the, he was the, um, the straw. Yeah. Um, but why? The
detective softens his voice and encourages him to explain what happened in a sympathetic tone. He's sitting only inches away to keep him talking. He's crying. Was it physical? No. He's crying. Oh my god. Finally, we got something, bro. Oh, wow. Our, we will say like what? Damn near hour. Damn near hour of this dude trying to confess. Or getting this dude trying to confess, bro. We finally get something. More sort of like a blast. Um, probably so. I mean, it wasn't. It was. It was a little more physical. Um, um, I'm, I'm in uh, Boy Scouts, right? Miranda. Uh, excuse me. Oh, uh, it's okay, man. So there's this, um, I'm almost eagle, you know, I'm almost done. You're just getting life, right, right, life scout. And then there's this, uh, leadership weekend, camp out, whatever thing, and, you know, where was it? This, uh, was Brownsy, somewhere up in, mm -hmm. I forgot, but, um, anyways, I didn't want to go, you know, I'm almost done, I didn't think I need a leadership camp, uh, so my attitude wasn't great on the trip. You got pissed? So you got pissed, and so we're coming down. He hits me, uh, here, we're getting a glimpse of Nick's father's authoritative and seemingly abusive parenting. This in no way justifies Nick's actions, but it does show that there may have been dysfunction in the home. If this is true, the physical and emotional abuse likely made Nick feel very powerless and could have made him so angry that he wanted to kill his father. However, it's unclear at this point why he would have also killed his mother and brothers. We don't have any information about whether the allegations of abuse were ever found to be true or not. Typically, the presence of antisocial personality disorder is what explains how a teen can engage in such a horrific act against their family members. An important point about APD is that according to the diagnostic criteria, the individual must be 18 years old to be given this diagnosis if the remaining criteria are met. This means that at 15, Nick could not be given this diagnosis. Was he beating on you too mentally? Or? It was mentally and you know, it was like, it got me a f lot of times. And and that was sort of, that was the... You're at life scale, I know. You're at life scale, for God's sakes. Uh, and so, that was sort of the beginning, like, you know, or the beginning of it, and it's just... How long ago was that? That was um, this fall. Okay. Last fall. And then I... Um, kept it up then. The detective interjects with comments that show support and appear to take Nick's side as he tells him the things his father allegedly said and did to him. This is to encourage him to keep talking and makes him feel like the detective understands him, despite knowing that nothing his father said or did justifies his actions. It just it kept going, and the little thing just seemed to always reverted back to that one thing, and then, you know, the alcohol thing happened, then they called me to take out the car. Oh, uh, you got a call before? Yeah, I got a call before. He threatened to keep it away from you? Right. And, um, the whole time your grades are good? Everything else is... Grades, grades were good. And last year, last freshman year, I got a D one quarter, but then I got an A the next quarter, so I got a D made well. It so that grades. Pretty harping on the D. Right, you harping on the D, and then he did. And you know, he did occasionally. Yeah, I wouldn't have caught huge physical beating, but I think he's still uncalled for. Right, the emotional, I think. So the the hit the. Uh, when he hit me, it didn't bother. It was the constant. Did he do it in front of your friends too? Um, never the hitting, but the the, the, the yelling and the you know anger. embarrassing. Yeah. And uh, then for my birthday, which is um, a couple of days, a couple of days away, we were supposed to take friends up to Deep Creek. Mm -hmm. And uh, this last weekend, he was uptight as usual, and. Uh, did he drink or anything? Or? No, it was never really alcohol. It was just a, he's overstressed, I think. Okay. You know, he and works and he gets up at five in the morning and comes home at six thirty. Mm -hmm. So then he sort of has Phil being nice and always climbs and he gets home, takes it out, you know, dinner almost every not almost but most nights. And, Is he doing it the same to your brothers? Or just you? Maybe, but I didn't. No. It didn't seem like that to me, but... To your mother at all? Yeah, but a little bit. But 
the bulk seem to be generated towards me. Mm-hmm. And then on Friday night, he was he was just mad. I don't even know why he was mad. And then I was giving directions how he was around Fingal's house. Mm-hmm. And then he just he lost his clothes or something. He didn't hit me. He just gets really angry. And then I just really didn't get lost. I just he went two feet past a turn and just had to make a tight turn. He come back. And then you have to put the car to reverse. I just got really angry. And then I went back to get the car. And I saw him sitting on the couch. The TV was on. And I knew the gun was out on the workshop bench. Mm-hmm. Nick covers his face almost the entire time he retails what he did, as though he's trying to hide from what he's revealing. What happened? I walked up. I sat there for a half hour. Just, he was sleeping? Yeah, standing over him. And then I, I went between putting the gun up to his head and pulling it back down and up. Do you have a pillow up too? Or? Yeah, just the gun. And the gun was... I'm not sure if I meant to pull the trigger or if it just... Well. It just the way he explains the story, it doesn't sound as if he had planned to kill his father that night, but when he saw the gun sitting out and his father asleep, he saw an opportunity and took it. This may be the truth, or he may have gone over with the intention of killing them. Even if he decided while at the house, he could still be charged with first-degree murder. Premeditation doesn't have to mean pre-planning. Even a few minutes of thought prior to an action or a break in the attack after which the perpetrator continues attacking can be enough for the premeditation element of first-degree murder. His claim that he doesn't know if he meant to pull the trigger could be Nick's way of trying to distance himself from fully taking responsibility for what he did. It's also possible that he was partially telling the truth. He may have been wavering in his decision on whether or not to shoot him. The longer he held the gun in his hand, the more his confidence may have built up until he finally pulled the trigger. And then once that happened, I freaked out, but I thought, you know, it all come down, but... I don't even know if they woke up or whatever, but so I sat on the couch and they were up and I just... I... In many ways, it's a greater indication of a total lack of empathy and poor moral conscience when a person has an opportunity to reconsider their actions, but they go through with the murder anyway. Even if Nick was out of it, as he said, or overcome with emotions in the moment, he still had moments in those 30 minutes where he must have realized the significance of his actions. Couldn't realize I couldn't just walk away from that. And then I shot my mom. And then She's still sleeping? Yeah. I waited for a little bit, then I think she went back to sleep. Mm-hmm. And then I shot her. His confession about shooting his mother while she was sleeping removes any kind of justification for the killing, as she wasn't even a witness to the father being killed. Both parents' murders were totally unprovoked, as they were sleeping when they were shot. Shooting someone allows the killer to not only be physically further from the victim, but also more emotionally detached from the killing. Why the brothers, man? I was, I didn't, I thought it no one was there to um, say anything that my story would go because it was the only one. I just got scared. Nick's revelation that he killed his brother solely for self-serving purposes shows how truly cold-blooded he is and how he is solely concerned about himself. He may have been angry with his father or frustrated with the rules or boundaries his parents set, so he thought if he eliminated them, his problems would go away. He may have believed that his life would be better on his own, but he likely didn't think about the long-term consequences of his actions. He could have been afraid that if his brothers were alive, they might point fingers at him or recall fights Nick had with his dad, which would give away his guilt. So he felt he had to kill everyone. Kill everybody and then at the end, confessed. Why you even had to to kill him at that point, literally. You was going to confess any way it go. It just happened. You're a little dumbass. A lot of niggas is dead. That's the only true emotion you're showing right now. 
I just gotta feel at least a little better. I need to know where the gun is though. We can't have that out there. It's on Shore Road. I'll explain on the map or whatever. It's you, you may have to take us there. Sure, it's fine. Is it? It's yeah. very, maybe it's in bushes. It's... You can point out to where it is? Yeah, definitely. The detective asks Nick to take him to where he ditched the murder weapon, which is the final step of the Reed technique. It's vitally important to back up the truthfulness of the confession with independent corroborating evidence, such as disclosing key facts of the crime which would only be known to the perpetrator. Turning over critical evidence like the murder weapon is extremely helpful in sealing a conviction. This is what I mean. There's a reason. There's always a reason. You don't want the world to think that you did it for no reason. How I mean, that's the bit. Did your brothers ever wake up? Were they awake? I think so. Do you remember where you shot your dad? I wasn't in there on his body. And I had. The head? Yep. How about your mom? The head. Your brothers too, then? The head. The... Why did you do that? I figured it'd be quicker. But, you know, just be instant. Bro is crazy, bro. I ain't gonna lie. Your friends didn't know about it? No. Is there anything else you can add, you think? Is there anything you need? No, I don't want about, I mean about you. I mean, obviously you're sorry about this, right? I, mean, I can see this is the only time that I've seen the motion. I wasn't trying to treat you bad. No. I, I hope you can respect that I have a job to do. No. It's, it's all me. All right. You need something to drink? I'm just going to do handcuffs off. You'll be okay? Alright, let's see. Uh, what are you going to start on? I guess maybe I got close to getting out of the house or something. I'm going to go to college. He, he tried to... Even more hard. Right, or something. Nick appears to be expressing genuine emotion, although it's unclear if his tears are for himself or for his family. At this point, it appears that he's being truthful and cooperative with the detective. He's confessed to the shootings, and he also provided the location of the gun. And, uh, and then, the, you, you said you, you just kind of stood there for a little bit before it all happened? At least a half hour. I was just, I was just sitting there. Sitting there sleeping. Just looking at him, raising the gun, and then I back down, raising the gun. <laughs> and this, I raised it one more time. I don't know if I pulled the trigger, I must have pulled the trigger, but... I don't know if it was subconscious, if I meant to do it, or was anything went off. It was, it was loud and ringing. And I, just, I sat down on the couch and waited for it all to come crashing down. And waiting for your mom and the brothers to come down? No, I never did. And then I, I just remember walking up the stairs into my mom's room. She's sleeping sound? Did you lean on the bed or what? What? I just I walked up, shot twice. Shot twice. And then you walked to your brother's room? And then shot Craig. And then it's been the bed. The, when you come in, or is it? I shot the, on the left, the straight, straight ahead. Mm -hmm. I shot, I walked to him, shot him, and then turned the bed. And I think, I think I shot him twice. I'm not sure if it was once or twice. What did you do after that? Um, what happened with the jewelry in the Xbox? I just I opened up the jewelry case, threw some on the ground, and moved the Xbox to the weed and the pool table. And then... How'd you leave through the back door? The back door. And I just threw the gun on the side of the road. Did you notice how many neighbors were turned lights on, or was anybody outside? Nothing. I was, I was, I was so out of it, I really... I wouldn't have noticed if someone was standing there with her. There might have been somebody, but whatever. We'll see stuff. That, stuff will come out later. You'll see things. So 
So what happens now? Well, we need to contact your grandfather. So we're just waiting as soon as they know. Um, what do you want us to tell your grandfather? Or your aunt? I don't really know what, to, what I would say. Okay. Well, that's just, we have to take care of some of that stuff. Mm -hmm. All right. Bathroom. I'm going to be out for a couple minutes. Bathroom, water, um, candy. And with respect, despite the fact that he admitted to killing his entire family. Now that Nick has changed into a jumpsuit, it's likely that it's really sinking in what's about to happen. After the interview ended with Nick's confession, he was charged with four counts of first-degree murder. What may come as a surprise to you is that soon after his trial began, Nick's family members, including his grandparents, aunts, and uncles, all began writing letters to the court asking for him to be given leniency. His maternal grandfather even backed up Nick's allegations that he was mentally and physically abused for most of his life. Regardless of whether or not these claims of abuse were true, as they've never been substantiated, Nick took a plea agreement in January 2009. He pleaded guilty to all four counts of first-degree murder and was sentenced to four life terms in prison. To this day, it's still under debate if Nick committed the murders in the spur of the moment as he claimed, or if he'd been planning them for a long time, as authorities believe. Either way, two of Nick's life terms will be served consecutively, which means that he will become eligible for parole in 2031 after serving 23 years. However, Nick's chances of receiving parole may be slim, because in Maryland, parole for a life sentence must be approved by the governor, and that hasn't happened since 1994. Well, that boy is cooked.